Hello and welcome to Board Game Gumbo. Today we're unboxing Stop the Train by Escape Plan Board Games. Stop the Train is a game for four to six players, plays in under 30 minutes. It's a hidden role game with the trader mechanic. Essentially you're all passengers on this train and one of you is a saboteur. So the other passengers are trying to get the train to stop while the saboteur obviously doesn't want that to happen. Uh, here's our rule book. So there are a few variable rules, uh, it, you know, advanced rules, whatever you want to call them, um, involving different cards and, and even different mechanics in the game. I will be giving a description of the game that includes most of those, except for the freight train. Uh, I'm just not particularly uh, well educated on uh, how that one works, but you can see the rules here. Uh, most of the other rules will be uh, explained as we go through it. So there are several different roles in the game. You always include the saboteur, but then you're going to include a selection of the other roles based on your player count. Um, and they each want different things. So obviously the saboteur wants the train to crash. Um, he only loses if the train is stopped. However, the other roles have multiple things they need to do to win. Obviously, if the train crashes, they're going to lose, but they not only need to stop the train or to stop it from getting crashed, but they also have to complete a secondary objective, which is going to make them look a little uh, shady during the course of the game. All right, so we have some punch board here for the track itself. This track just goes together like a, a puzzle. So you got little clips for everything now, there's only one way that the track goes together so it'll always be the same um pretty um pretty easy to put together from the looks of it i'm not going to put it all together right now uh, it all punches out really nicely the graphics are nice you've got some iconography on the the tracks themselves at certain points just to denote different things, like if you're on a hill or in a tunnel, those things do have an effect during the course of the game. So like here, this is telling you that that's, those three tracks are part of the tunnel. And there are certain things you can do specifically in tunnels that you can't do otherwise. We have a couple different tokens here. Obviously we have the end point, which is Paris. A couple different tokens here. There's a speed token. Um, one of the objectives of the um, rolls is to hit a certain speed. And so this starts on the X. And if you ever achieve that speed, it flips over to the check mark just to show that they did complete that objective. Current player token. And then a couple permit tokens. So you can fail your secondary objective as one of the other hidden rolls. Um, as long as you end the game with one of these permit tokens, um, they can be taken from you. So there's going to be a, a bit of a fight for those. And then we have sort of the player board itself, which keeps track of the, the train speed. Uh, the train moves a certain number of spaces based on the speed. So at 30, it moves one space per 30, 30 kilometers an hour. So at 30, it's moving one space at 180, it's moving six spaces, a space being one um tie on a, on the um on the track so if you're moving let's say you're moving 90 and the train was here it would move one two three spaces we got a little punch out here which will have a little plastic rivet to put this pointer on just to keep track of the speed and then you just got a play area to put the cards so this is where these permits would be, and the, the rail speed record token would be there. And then you have three spaces for cards. You have one space for the draw deck, the discard, which will be face down, and then the actual play area, which will be face up. More boards. And then the final few components, we've got our little plastic rivet for our wheel. We have two trains. These are actually 
pretty cool. I just, I like the, the silk screening on them, I guess, is what this is. Um, it's just clever. It's smart. The, the piece isn't completely um, a flat shape. It's not just a square or a rectangle. It's got a little bit of difference to it. And then with the silk screening on it, I think it just looks really sharp. And then we've got the, the freight train as well. Those are cool. I like those. Yeah, a nice weight to them as well. And then we have our cards. So here are our sort of our core cards here, these effect cards. So first we have character reference cards, just so that you can see at a glance what each character wants to do. The saboteur obviously wants the, to cause a collision in Paris. Um, it also tells you which track they want. So at a certain point during the game, you have to choose one of three tracks and certain roles want a particular track. The saboteur wants the fast track because it's got the least amount of spaces he's got to go through while the resistance conspirator wants to take the viaduct route. And that'll often be their secondary objective. Not always, um, but a lot of times they will. The resistance conspirator wants to throw the saboteur off the train, which is something you can do. You have an option whenever you pass over a bridge to throw somebody off the train. Um, and that's what they, they want to do. The MI6 agent actually wants to keep the saboteur alive because he wants to question him once they get to Paris. But so here's a just a card that gives you basically all the objectives of the different roles. So you don't have to go looking in the book. You can just see these at a glance. The rest of these are effect cards. And this is the main deck of the game. So when you're playing, you'll have this board out and this deck will be here. Whoever the first player is, whoever has the current player token, will draw three cards. I'll kind of draw three randomly from the deck here. And this mechanic will be pretty similar um, to a lot of what you've seen in other hidden roll games. But the current player will look at three cards and these cards do different things. So like full speed ahead increases the speed all the way to 180. So if you're not the saboteur, or if you're not looking to uh, to reach that speed um, record, that's probably pretty bad. Accelerate makes you go up 30, and then there's an ID check. You may maintain the current speed, or you can check the identity of another player without showing it to anyone else, but you have to increase the speed by 60 if you do that. So the current player is gonna look at three cards, and he's gonna choose one to discard. These are all kind of bad because they all potentially increase the speed, but this one's probably the worst. So let's assume we're not playing the saboteur. We're going to discard this one face down so nobody's going to see it. Then the current player token is going to move to the player to the right, who is going to be handed these two cards, and only they are going to see them. Obviously, the person who just passed them will see them, but um, those are the only two people. And then from those two, that player will choose one to play, and then they'll discard the other one, and then they'll play this one face up, and if there's a choice, the person who plays the card gets to make that choice. And that's sort of the standard game. So the rest that we're about to look at involves a lot of the sort of the, um, the extra rules. And the advanced rules also include some of those roles, the hidden roles that we looked at, like the Resistance Conspirator and the MI6 Agent are actually with some of the advanced rules. You, you're not supposed to play with those in your first game. Uh, I probably would just because they're interesting, but those are the advanced rules. So another character reference card, uh, a couple more actually. This does play up to six players. So looks like we got a total of six of those, which is perfect. Unfortunately, you need at least four to play. So I don't think this is gonna get to the table immediately but um, I'm really excited about this one. So here we have the signal box vote. I mentioned earlier that there are, at a certain point, you have to choose one of three pathways to go down. These are how you make that decision. So each player is gonna be dealt one of each card, one fast track, one scenic route, and one viaduct. And they are going to secretly play one of those cards face down. And then whichever route has the most votes is gonna be the route that the train takes. Then we have just some order of play cards, just some reminders of how the, the, the round events work. And then we have character cards. So these are the different roles, starting with the saboteur. 
I do kind of like the art on this in the on the box as well, but also on the character cards. It's kind of this um, this noir, you know, LA Confidential 1920s look to it, which makes sense considering the time period it's set in. So you'll see, obviously, most of them want to stop the train because, you know, the alternative is is not good for anybody uh, except the saboteur. So their first mission is to stop the train, but then their second mission is always going to be something different. And here back here, the mayor is one of the advanced cards. I believe um, they don't appear to be in order because I know the resistance coordinator is one of the advanced cards. I don't see where it says it on the card. It must say it in the book. But there are a couple in there that are advanced play for uh, not for your first playthrough. And then intervention cards are another thing that you're going to add in eventually, unless you're like me and not just include them immediately because they're very fun. Uh, these are just different things that you can do that um, mess with the game. So the conductor card just cancels the last intervention card. Intervention being the cards we're looking at now. So you can cancel another player's card. Uh, prevents anyone from being thrown off the train. Uh, allows you to choose, close off one route. Uh, it makes the signal box vote public. Cancels the signal box vote. Uh, clips the top speed of the train. So the speedometer cannot go above 150. So those are just little things that mess with the game. Um, would probably be my favorite aspect of the game. You know, obviously I have to play a couple times to see first, but uh, these types of cards are usually my favorite part of this style of game. And that's it. That's everything in Stop the Train from Escape Plan Board Games.